Hello, my name is Iggy Kid. I'm participating in the Haba non e pub. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but the uh, game design jam that's coming up this weekend. I've gotten my bag of Haba bits, and I'm going to be documenting the process as much as I can. So I'm going to start by documenting just what's in this bag. So let me get it open. All right, here we go. Whoa. Okay. We have quite a few things here. So I did participate in the uh, Haba design contest this last year. So I recognize a few of these things. These I implemented in my design for that. And uh, yep, had one of those guys. All right, so let's let's organize this and see what we have. Okay, so this is more or less organized. I'm going to kind of move things around as I go, but I'm going to kind of brainstorm for a minute. We have five of these tiles with the uh, tiger mother and child with a blank back. We have one that is a monkey. We have two of these, which are the same on both sides. It's sort of a person that is standing up tall. We also have a much smaller one, sort of a meeple kind of thing. I have eight of these. They have a hole through the middle, like for bead necklace something. That one is a more narrow hole and that's a longer hole, which is the same on all of them. One side has a mushroom, the other side has just sort of a dot. I have eight of those. I have two of these, which I'm not sure how you would describe it, but it's red with the star in the middle. It's got a hole in the back. Uh, I have six of these nondescript wooden discs. I have six of these blank dice. I, I, yeah, I'd say these are dice with rounded corners. They are blank and actually unfinished. Uh, feels like they're just raw wood. I have one of these with a number of sort of abstract images. That one's like food, letters, animals. Uh, I have one of these, which is just a wood colored glossy. This one is finished. Um, cuboid. It's it's a little longer on one side. And then I have two of these yellow ones that are similar to that, but uh, thinner along one side and longer in general. But they are the same width going that way. I have one blue cylinder. I have these four discs, which are much thicker, uh, nearly twice as thick, looks like, as the plain wood colored ones and those are in blue, purple, red, and green. I have these three wavy purplish pieces. I have this blue witch, which is on one side blank and on the other side shows the actual details. I have this cat with a graphic on one side and blank on the other. I have this little dinosaur, which is again, detailed on one side, not on the other. And in fact, it's embossed on the detail side. And then I have three of these guys which are these blue sort of ghosts, uh, has various holes all around the edges, and they are all identical. So that is everything I have. I'm actually going to check if I'm allowed to use other pieces, because I do still have a big bag of pieces from the contest that I did, so I may include those later. In the meantime, I'm gonna see what I can think up with all of this. I'm gonna put these pieces to the side because they were, it's effectively the ones that I used in my uh, contest entry. So I don't wanna get too bogged down in redoing what I did before. I'm thinking I definitely wanna include these, these. So I definitely wanna use those, maybe these, since they're the, the cleanest set. I think toadstool makes me think witch. So witch and the mushrooms, probably. Probably put these aside. I don't know how I'd use that. It's a little too abstract. Um, maybe these as player pieces. I'll put those on a maybe side. Maybe these, since I have a good amount of them. I don't know about these necessarily. I'm gonna stick those to the side. Although I do also like these guys quite a bit. So maybe something with that. And I really, I enjoyed the dinosaur a lot, but that's just a personal preference. So I don't know. I don't know about that. Hmm. So a lot of options here, a lot of stuff I can do. 
Uh, I'm going to go and clarify some of the rules, which may change later because they are apparently unveiling some rules as things go on. Uh, by the time you're watching this, it will be over and I'll have completed the game. So that'll be at the end of this video. But as an intro, these are the various pieces I'm working with. Maybe more, which when I do my next brainstorming thing, I will include. So with all of that in mind, I hope that I'm able to come up with something interesting and I hope you'll enjoy watching this. So talk to you in just a bit. Hello. Iggy Kid here again with another update. Um, so we got the rules and everything. We had the kickoff meeting and I have an idea for a game. So I'm going to show you my current idea before I get to play test it. And then later I'm going to be able to play test it. I might, might uh, put together a TTS mod depending on how much work that ends up being. But I, th I think this is a pretty solid thing mechanically, thematically, not sure. Um, so the rules that we've been given are thus Haba game jam rules it must be about food in some way it must use something that you hide uh you cannot roll dice they did clarify you can use dice you just cannot roll dice and must use at least seven of these wooden bits that we received so with that all in mind now i was already planning on using the the mushrooms in some way so that's food covered uh, the dice, I wasn't necessarily planning on dice, but that definitely puts things into perspective. And since I'm using the mushrooms, there's eight of those, so that would probably cover the seven bits minimum. It's minimum seven bits. In fact, let me write that down. Minim, mi minimum. I, I feel like I didn't spell that right. Um, the other thing I have to correct myself, it's none pub. Uh, it's basically unpub. It's a pun. I said noni pub or nani pub or whatever. I feel real dumb. Uh, they should have like camel case the, the P in pub so that it was clear as two words. Whatever. That's my bad. Nun pub. So it's the nun pub haba game jam. So with all of this in mind, I will show you my concept for a game currently. So I'm going to move all of the pieces that are not going to be used in this particular game out of the way. So these are all of the pieces from my concept. The current working title is Toadstools and Targets. Um, the theme is where I'm I'm kind of stuck right now because I, I don't quite know how it works thematically, but mechanically, here's how it goes. So everybody gets a cube, which will be labeled zero through five. Uh, I'll probably just use standard D6s in my prototype. And everybody gets a Toadstool and Target token. So there we go and they get a colored disc, which, as you can see, are just slightly smaller than the toadstools. They're to cover, so they're to cover and they're to signify which one is which. Now, one player starts with the witch token. We'll say it's red this time. And so everybody else, they get to decide behind their hand if they want it to be a toadstool or a target. And then they put their thing over top and they hand it to the witch. And so we just do that for all of them and everybody would be hidden. And then the witch gets to pick one of these. Now, if they pick one and it's a target, they don't get anything. The witch goes over to whoever did that. So blue would get the witch now and then they get to choose. However, if they pick, oh, I didn't do any toadstools in here. Hold on. If say green, if they pick green and green did a toadstool, then they get a point, which you would turn the cube over. So from zero to one, and that's one point. Then everybody gets their stuff back, and the witch player keeps it, and they go. Now, you may be wondering, like, well, if I want the witch, why wouldn't I just always put a target, you know? Because that means I get the witch. Here's why. Because the witch, if all of them are... Targets. If the witch thinks that all of them are targets and none of them are toadstools, the witch can call that. So they, they call the bluff and then they reveal all of them. So for if they reveal all of them, then everybody who put a target loses one point. You can there's no going to negatives. You go down to zero at the most. But if they call it and reveal it, everyone who put in a toadstool 
gets one point. And then you just go up to five. You go up until you're maxed out on the die. Whoever does that first wins. And you just pass the witch around. You make bluffs, you call bluffs. That's the game. So I think it's gonna be pretty fun. It's definitely a pretty pure bluffing game. Thematically, I'm not sure. I know the witch wants the toadstools because she wants to eat them, food. And we're hiding something. This is at least, even if we're say three players, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bits. So that matches everything. Uh, oh, eight, nine, ten, because the witch player also has some for when they switch around. So we're covered on that, but thematically, I'm trying to work it out because obviously uh, the, the one idea I had was um, you're trying to placate the witch. So it's like, give her a toadstool. She won't leave. But if you give her a target, it makes you a target. So she goes over to you. But then why would you want to give her toadstools? Alternatively, I had a kind of silly idea where you um, where it's like a witch's broom driver's license test, basically. And we're each instructors. And so you give her the target to tell her where to go to, and she needs the toadstools to get points. She needs five toadstools to pass. But then, say there was some kind of, there was some kind of scandal where they found out that none of them were giving toadstools and it would go on forever. So they are allowed to call, call out everybody and possibly make them lose points. They get docked pay. And you get a bonus if you are the one who helps her pass. So that's why you would want her to pass. So that's my closest idea for the theme. I'm gonna have to play test it to figure out exactly what I want the theme to be. But mechanically, that's pretty solid. I, I, I am gonna play test it and I will be back with the results from that. But yeah, I, I feel pretty happy with this. I think it's gonna be pretty fun. So stick around, you know, keep watching the video because this is all gonna be one video and I will update you on how everything goes. Okay, thanks. Hello, hello. Back again with another design update. So, the game has changed a bit since I first envisioned it. I've been able to run a few playtests, and in fact, I'll show you my playtest notes. So as you can see, we had the uh, Game Jam rules up top, and I have the current rules on the right of the game. The game is called Targets. Uh, targets tricks and toadstools. I actually need to change that. First three playtests were in person. The other three have been digital. Uh, playtest five was the only one I've been able to do with four players. All the other ones have been three players. So the idea is that the game is three to four players currently, just because those are the bits that I have over here. But yeah, first playtest. Um, we decided that the witch should score when there's tricks, which is to say when somebody tries to do all targets, like so. When somebody tries to do that, the witch can call tricks. And if they're all that, then the witch scores two points. Originally it was one point. Um, then the second time we were like, okay, that's kind of hard to get. So maybe it should be two points. So now it's two points. Then after that, uh, it was lose nothing for tricks unless it was all toadstools. So all toadstools, when you call tricks, you lose one point. Otherwise, each player loses one if they had a target, gains one if they had a toadstool. Uh, Playtest 4, someone mentioned, could be a fun drinking game, which I like a lot. I'll probably do that at some point, and in fact, it could be done just with quarters and stuff. It doesn't have to be all this. You just, you know, had a quarter with your hand and it's like heads or tails, something like that. Um, variable scoring was an option. So like maybe a deck of cards and you change the value of the toadstools and stuff. Uh, then I was trying to think up themes. So like one guy suggested like the targets. So everybody there, all of, all of the players, they are doing a a sort of like offering to the witch but she only takes one however if uh she gets the target it's like oh okay well i'm gonna go over there and steal your kid and then the t kid comes back as the witch so that's why the witch is there uh, kind of i, I kind of get it uh someone else said like it's delivering food around the forest so it's like she's trying to get a toadstool and then take it to his destination which is the target GPS marker. I kind of like that. I don't know. I'm thinking maybe just keep it kind of abstract 
because I don't feel like it needs more of a theme than it has. Um, but if it is, I, I would probably go with that Uber Eats. It's just difficult, you know, because the Target is a bit of a strange icon. It doesn't necessarily need to be a Target. I just really like the alliteration in the title. So I'm going to have to prioritize. Playtest 5, I got a lot of info because I was the one with four players and a lot of stuff came up. In four players, there was a point where the witch didn't go to one guy the entire game and it was really hard to get a bunch of points, so a drug for a long time. So they're saying maybe allow multiple pulls in four players. Like, uh, you get one extra point if you're able to get two toadstools, but then you... So like, if say, it was like this and okay, I pick green. Okay, that's one. Uh, I'm going to try and double it up. Two, so that's two toadstools, one point each, plus an extra one for the extra toadstool, so three. Uh, and then, okay, I'll do another one. Target, minus one, so you still just get the two points, you know? So it's like, it's still a detriment to keep trying, but not too much. Uh, they also suggested using cups and then having an option where you put out your cup with no token underneath, which is interesting. I don't know if I'm going to go with that, but I like where they were heading with that for sure. Non-witch players need more agency. I've gotten this multiple times where when you're the witch, you're making all these fun decisions, but then everyone else is just like, well, which one do I do? You know, it's just bluff. So it's like, what more could they do? Uh, and then if someone said like, if you're not picked, maybe you get a bonus or there's an incentive for the witch to, you know, pick you, like say an extra point if you pick them, even if it's not a toadstool, you still get a point, you know? So sort of like Puerto Rico has the extra doubloons that they put on the rolls that don't get picked. Interesting. Uh, but I think the one I'm going to go with is Playtest 6, the one I, that I just did. Pass the witch around. So basically, here are the current rules. I'll explain them in this teach, which does not take very long. So every player picks a color, they get a token, and they get a scoring cube, which these are going to be 0 to 5. All right, and then you randomize who gets the witch. I just put them in my hand. Drop one down, green. So green goes first. I'll just say I was green. I didn't actually pay attention. Uh, okay, so I'm the witch first. So everybody else, they get to pick toadstool or target, cover it up, and you'd, you'd hide it behind your hand, you know? Or like under the table if you're playing at a table, and then you present it to the witch. And the witch has two options. They can pick one. So if they pick one and it's a toadstool, awesome. Score goes up, so that you go from zero to one. If they pick a target, whoever put down the target, they get the witch. The witch heads over that way. Now, the witch has another option, which is instead of picking just one, if the witch thinks that it's all targets, like everybody's trying to trick her, she can say tricks. And if you say tricks, you reveal them all. And if it was all targets, then you get two points. So this would go from t one, two, three. Um, if she was wrong and two were targets and one was toadstool or two were toadstool and one was so like a mix um everybody who had the target loses points down to a minimum of zero you can't go negative and everyone who had a toadstool gets a point so tricks can actually help someone else uh and if she was fully wrong called tricks and it's toadstool 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 all toadstool she loses a point, so she go back down to two. Uh, now the other rule, because that's pretty much it. You just play until you get to the maximum of five. The other rule is that if you play for three returns without losing the witch to a target, you have to give it to whoever has the least points. So if say, this was round three and, well, I got a toadstool, so I got points, you know, I'm up to four already. Whoever gets it, uh, whoever has the least points gets it. I'm realizing now, that that's uh hmm, how would i do that because if you're tied for points how would you break a tie i would say you s look and if someone has a target then it goes to them and if not then the witch chooses yeah yeah that works for now so that way you can't really bully because it's like well, you could do that for everybody but then like yes you'll pick the last kid last but they still get picked eventually. So, okay, okay, I'll write that down. Um, so, there we go. See, even solving problems in the design diaries. So that's cool. 
So yeah, that's my game so far. I hope to run some more four-player games because that revealed a lot and some more in-person games now that I have the rules changed a little bit. So look forward to that. Um, I still have about one day. Let's see, about one day, two and a half hours until the feedback session. So I'm going to get as much playtesting done as I can tomorrow and I'll probably do a block tonight to get some playtesting done. So looking forward to that. I'm pretty excited. This is a game that I made and people had fun with it. So I'm already feeling pretty happy about that. So that's it. I don't really feel like showing just my hands now, so I may as well just talk straight to the camera. Really need to shave. Ugh, exhausted. But I did quite a few play tests and I made a whole game, which is really satisfying. Um, I'm really happy that I participated in this. My feedback session, I uh, got feedback from Dave Chalker. Chalker? I hope I pronounce that right sorry if you watch this um but yeah uh he is the designer of get bit which is a very fun game that i enjoy a great bit so i'm very very happy that i got his feedback on my game um he liked the simplicity he said i did a pretty good pitch he said maybe maybe make it a rule that you do have to reveal all of the information so that people can catch on to the trends faster which yeah, I kind of agree. So I, I probably will implement that and do some more playtests in person. And yeah, that's that's pretty much everything. As a sort of post-mortem autopsy, sorry, I keep getting the shadow from the mic. This is not my usual setup for video. Um, but yeah, it was a ton of fun. And I'm glad that I got to do it. And I'm glad people had fun playing the game that I made. It It was stressful. It, it was definitely a lot of work. Um, I probably would have liked to have taken more time with it, but it helped me learn a lot. And yeah, when I go on to make make some of the games that I have ideas for that are a bit bigger and not specifically for a game jam, I feel like I have a lot to take away from this. So thanks to Nunpub and Haba for putting this on. Uh, thanks to Dave for giving me feedback. Thanks to everybody who play tested and everybody who, you know, gave advice or just talk things out fellow teams you know good job you guys made games too you made a whole game people had fun playing what you made and it's a great feeling and yeah i made a game this weekend feels good thanks for watching i i hope this i hope this illuminated sort of the game design process a little bit okay thanks for watching bye bye good night i gotta i gotta sleep Ugh.